Welcome to the Living Moment with Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. This is Mark Rosen, Coach Rosie. I want to thank you for joining us here on Living Moment with Coach Rosie. And we say here, gang, when you're with us, you are part of Team Elevation, where you look to take yourself to the next level. And we say you have to separate to elevate. You have to leave old things behind and change things up um, to get to those new levels. And that's actually what we're talking about on the program today. I know we're moving closer to the new year. And as we move into the new year, I have folks talk to me a lot about changing up routines and what can I do different this year. And literally what we're talking about on the program today is how to make your routine less routine um, when you're working out. And we all know that person that comes to the gym. Um, you know, If it's Monday, this, they're doing a certain thing. If it's Tuesday, they're doing a certain thing. Every time they come in, it's the same exercises, the same reps. It's the same speed. It's the same incline. And they've been doing it for as long as you can remember, doing the same thing on the same day, year after year, month after month, week after week. And you think, and you look back and think, wow, how have they changed? Have, they, have I noticed any change from now and then when I look back? And they look the same. Yeah, let, let, let's not turn into that person, right? So consistency is good. It's essential, but if you've been doing the exact same workouts for a bit too long, it's time to switch things up. So as we get into 2023, that's what we're going to talk about. So yes, you may have seen some decent results from your program that you're doing, um, doing the same cardio, doing the same weights, the same movements, same range of motion at the same speed, but it's the 21st century, okay? So... We, we want to be the person that changes things up because many of the messes we're going to discuss play upon the concept of just remodeling where we're just changing some few well-known patterns, adding a few variables that can be relearned um, for a new, totally new pattern and in totally new results, okay? So what we're going to be talking about in the program, today, I'm actually going to go through 10 suggestions on how to change up your routine a little bit ways that you can introduce one or two variables in a familiar program, in a familiar exercise, and create a brand new stimulus out of a movement that's already well practiced, you've already been doing it, but can help you prevent from plateauing and even spark some new progress as you move into the new year, right? So we're talking about how I can uh, change up those reaction forces applied to the body to propel it to cause muscle activity to change. Uh, the response time for the stretch shortening cycle to change so you get a little bit more power. Uh, just some different things that you can add within your program and by tweaking a few things to change up routine can change the results you see. So don't go anywhere. I think this one's going to open some eyes on some folks that are looking for something a little bit different coming into 2023 but might not have an idea of how to exactly get there. This program is going to help you. This is Living Wealth Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. We'll be back right after this, talking about how to make your routine less routine. Welcome back to Living Wealth Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. This is Coach Rosie, Mark Rosen. And on the show today, gang, we're going to be talking about how to make your routine less routine. And literally what we're diving into, gang, to change up and see some uh, changes on your body. If you've been doing the same routine, kind of stuck in the rut. Some of the examples we're going to give you is just going to talk about induce, you know, introducing one or two variables in a training program of workouts and training and exercise that you're probably already familiar with. Right, you're doing these things, and it's just simple uh, changes you can make to create. Again, we talked about a new stimulus on a movement you've already been doing, you've already familiar with. So it's not we're doing anything crazy, but it can really help change with what you're doing. So there's ten of these we're going to go dive into, um, and it, you don't have to write these down. If you want to go to CoachRosie.com, we'll have these set up on our blog. But number one is get a different grip. Okay, so grip something that many people don't seem to like to mess around with. You know, you see a bar, you see a dumbbell, you grab the bar, you grab the dumbbell, and you start lifting. And most people don't think about their grip or their hand positions very much. Um, but by changing up your grip, so I'm going to just give an example. So 
let's say you're doing, um, you're going to grab a dumbbell and you're going to do chest press, right? Um, and you're grabbing the dead center of the weight, you grab the handles and the weights are equally distributed on both sides of the hand. And it really doesn't require very much stability from the forearm muscles. But now, shift your hand position either to the very top where your thumbs are against the weights or to the very bottom where your pinky is against the weights and do the exact same exercise. What you're going to find, you're going to have to adjust the weight's balance and alter the activity of the forearm muscles, the shoulders, and some other things depending on the exercise you're doing. So by changing your grip, right, just change the variant or even use a uh, reverse grip, um, supinating your hands instead of pronate or a mixed grip. One is going to be supinated, palm up. The other one is going to be pronated with the palm down when you're doing things with the bar. Just by changing and doing variations, by changing the grip, the width of the grip, going narrow, wide, um, can really change your workout and how you're doing it. And I'm kind of falling in line with that. Number two is changing your base of support. Right? Am I do, doing a regular stance, like a squat stance with feet both underneath me? Am I doing a staggered stance? Am I going to go to a single leg stance? Can I do, if I'm doing overhead shoulder press, that exercise is going to change if I have both feet underneath me, if I'm in a staggered stance, or I'm standing on one leg doing my shoulder press. So your base of support, right, when I add my progressions of how I'm doing my basis support, can it be performed, like I say, single leg exercises when I'm doing my upper body exercise, or even when I'm doing some my, my, like we're doing split squats instead of regular squats. Number three that we add within our program is speed of movement. So rep uh, speed or tempo can be one of the variables to manipulate. And for here's an example that we'll do sometimes is um, we'll do... Uh, time under tension. So time under tension is, examples would be doing a push-up. I'm going to take five seconds to get the bottom of my push-up. At the bottom of my push-up, I'm going to hold for five seconds, and then I'm going to take five seconds to come up out of my push-up. So I'm actually putting the muscle under tension for about 15 seconds. And if you normally did, let's say, three sets of 10 push-ups, try to do that sometime and see if you get three sets of four or three sets of five out of that before you're totally blasted and it really really rocks your world a little bit just having that time under tension also to change it up and um, with that speed of movement is also then number four is your rest intervals so when I'm doing those time push-ups I can do regular push-ups but instead of taking 30 seconds in between now I'm only going to take 5 or 10 seconds in between, which now puts the muscles under more tension because I have less rest, and it's really going to be a high-intensity workout. So I can change the speed of the movement. I can also <clears throat> change the rest intervals, if that makes sense. Number five is I'm going to use dynamic resistance. And this, is, this one's maybe a little bit tougher to do, especially if you're at a home gym, depending on what your gym has. But it's using a form of resistance that changes throughout the movement. Um, so example would be to use heavy chains or bands when performing your free weight movement. So you actually would hook bands to the bar and hook it to attach. So as I pull the bar, if there's 40 pounds on the bar and I have a band attached, as I'm pulling the bar toward me, an example of doing curls, as I get to the top of my lift, there could be 60 pounds of resistance. And as I take it back down, it goes back to the 40 because there's no tension on the band. So by adding dynamic resistance can really, really change up the form. Um, sandbags are another example. Uh, slosh pipes, if you've ever seen those, we'll take PVC pipe and fill them with water. And not completely, fill so about half full. And as you do movement, the water sloshes and moves. By change that move, it's a dynamic resistance, so I have to work to stabilize on what I'm doing when I'm doing those movements. So that would be dynamic resistance. And those are very easy to do by, like we say, just adding a band or adding sandbags or something that's not very stable when you're doing that. Number six is used rest, pause, breaks during your set. Okay, So let's say you're in the middle of a tough set of squats and you're getting close to your work capacity. Instead of racking the weight when you get to the last rep, you're just going to stand there with the weight on your shoulders and back and take a few deep breaths. It won't be fun, okay? But, you, but you'll survive. After you catch your wind, you're going to knock out another rep or two. So let's say you do 10 reps. You don't know if you're going to be able to get that last ninth or 10th rep. You stand and hold that. And then after 15, 20, 30 seconds, you do two or three more reps. You're going to repeat that process until you see 
you know, your, your late Aunt Ethel waving at you from the top of the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, don't go to the light. Rack the weights, grab some water, rest. But that's really going to do some things to change up your workout because you're changing that rep, rest, pause, break during the sets and not doing what you normally do. Number seven, which is huge, is breathing. Okay, and that's another one of those things that most people don't really spend time thinking about. Simply because it's either you have the pattern kind of ingrained to breathe in a certain way. So you just kind of simply set up and do the same workout every single time. But um, the mechanics of breathing means we have three distinct regions where we can draw breath from. The diaphragm, the intercostals, and through the neck. Okay, And if you're not using all of these areas properly, you don't get enough in air, period. And most of us are upper body chest breathers where we don't breathe through the diaphragm. And if we don't, you're not going to get the response and the energy because air gives us energy. I tell folks all the time, work on your breathing. One of the ways to do that is sit in a chair in two different ways. One, just reach both arms up over your head as high as you can and take breaths, deep, deep breaths when you're sitting in your chair with your arms over your head. What you're going to find out is to be a chest breather is tougher to do. You'll start breathing from your diaphragm. Another thing to do is to bend over, put your chest on your knees and grab your ankles and take deep breaths. You won't be able to take deep breaths from your chest. It's going to force you to breathe from your diaphragm. So it teaches you to be a diaphragm breather. Number eight is to change up your exercise order. So if you normally do a one, two, three, four, five, six exercise, you're going to do a three, two, six, one, five, four. By changing the order up can really zap what you're doing from your workout. So instead of starting with your bench, you're going to start with your biceps and triceps. When you come back to your bench, you're probably not going to be able to use the same weight because your arms are going to be blasted and you're going to have to back off on the weights. I've done this a couple times and think, man, I... Before I was using X amount and now I'm using Z amount and I'm going to have to have a spotter because I can't do it anymore. And then even with that, number nine is to actually add weight. Yep, go heavier. Shocker, right? Um, What you really need to do is add some weight to the bar and lift it like it's falling on top of your best friend and you got to get the weight off. Okay, you know, keep technique in mind. If your technique starts to break down, you're using too much weight, but don't be scared to add a little weight. And then number 10 is just change your rep and set scheme. If you've been using three sets of 10, it's time to change it up. You always do three sets of 10. Do some higher reps. Do some marathon sets. Do some low rep power sets. You know, choose one exercise and work up to heavy, um, a heavy single. And they bang out 10 sets of fast doubles for the others. Um, go back to pyramid, pyramiding. There's a diff- bunch of different ways that you can set up your sets and rep scheme. By doing some of these variables can make a huge difference. So example, and I know i got to get a break in here real quick, but example is if you only change up three variations for, let's say, the chest press, you have the possibility that you could change like 59,000 different possible ways to alter that individual exercise. If I pick just three of the ten different ways, change your rep and set scheme, change your breathing, change what... By changing some different variables, you have actually 59,000 ways to change your chest press up so you're not always doing the same thing. I hope that makes sense. So by adding a few different things, can it completely change your workout? When it changes your workout, it changes you and you see different results. So I flew that, I know, pretty quick, gang. I was talking 120 miles per hour, and you might be listening at 90. So I apologize about that. But if you you want more information on this, go to CoachRosie.com. I'm going to take a quick break when we come back. We'll talk about more about this and answer some of your questions. This is Living Well with Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Living Well with Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. Again, this is Mark Rosen, gang. I want to thank you for joining us. And if you ever have a question you want to get on the radio, Simply email me here at the station at coach at kvht.com or you can email me and go to Coach Rosie. That's Coach R O Z Y dot com. To find some of this information, you can go there. We have blogs set up, we have information, it's all free. But you can see my contact information and reach out and if you have a question, send that to me. And we'll try to get it on the air if you want it to be. And if we do, you'll get a long sleeve t shirt. Otherwise we can answer a question for you that we don't get on the air to help you out too. 
Um, I'm short on time, but I'm going to read this one real quick. Reggie talks about exactly what we're talking about here. Gang says, Coach, I'm really stuck in a routine. I find like I'm getting bored and feel like I can't keep doing the same thing. I'm losing you know, motivation, intensity of my workouts. Have any suggestions? Reggie, I hope you're listening to the program today, bud, because I think these 10 things, just when we were signing off at the end there, you know, if you if you change some of these ten methods of alternate exercise, like I said when we're signing off, if, if there are only three variations that would possibly occur, that's over fifty nine thousand possible ways to alter your individual exercise. If if each method had four options for an exercise, it would mean over a million possible ways of changing an exercise, a program, and this could mean that you wouldn't apply. You know, you can apply these changes to the same exercise every day. And for the next almost 20, 2,800 years, you would never repeat the same exact design. Okay? So you officially have zero excuse to do the same workout next week that you did this week. So play around with some of these variations. Try to get some crazy inconsistencies for each exercise in your workout. Because I think what you're going to notice is it makes a huge difference mentally, physically, and the changes that you see in your body and in your program and what's going to happen to you. And like we're saying, this, our mantra for this next year, gang, is really to be the best me in 2023. If you haven't yet, make sure you go to CoachRosie.com. How to find out how to get your best me in 2023 t-shirt. We have those those available for you for going into 2023 um, with Coach Rosie. want to thank you for joining us today. And as we always say, gang, don't just dream it, but do it. Take some of these 10 things and, and apply it to what we're doing. Take some action. I think when you do, you're going to see amazing things happen. This is Coach Rosie, and this is Living Well with Coach Rosie, powered by Avera Sports. And until next time, make it a great one.